That's right, everyone. Today's top ten is none other than Rocco's Modern Life. One of my all-time favorite cartoons and TV shows of all time. You know, uh, well, of course, Star Trek's my all-time favorite, but um, Rocco's Modern Life is my all-time favorite, favorite cartoon shows of all time, right behind Star Trek. Now, this was also another challenge, because Star Trek was my all-time favorite. That, that was challenging. But this was my... Uh, uh, a uh, challenge for me. Um, anyway, um, so uh, here we go with the top ten Rocco's Modern Life uh, 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 TV uh, episodes. Again, I don't own anything. Uh, they all belong to the owners of uh, Rocco's Modern Life and Viacom and Paramount and CBS and uh, whoever owns Rocco. Um, Anyway, it's uh, David, uh, Giant2B, it's sometimes vlog! It's a vlog that happens sometimes. Anyway, so here we go with the top 10 of uh, Rocco's Modern Life episodes. Coming at number 10 is Cruisin'. This is a uh, Twilight Zone episode where um, uh, Rocco and Heifer, um, uh, they... Uh, are uh, taking their, their grandpa. Remember, a heifer, wolf, a heifer was adopted by wolves. They originally wanted to eat him, uh, but they t couldn't eat him. They fell in love with the the, the um, heifer, and um, so heifer and Rocco go on a cruise. Take uh, Grandpa Wolf on a cruise ship, and it turns out to go to the Bermuda Triangle as one of the uh, Twilight Zone episodes. So here we go with uh, uh, number ten is cruising. Again, I do not own Rockwell's Modern Life, and, um, yeah, yes, they obviously time-traveled, and, um, and, of course, uh, Rocco and Heifer became old, and the grandpa and the, and his, uh, love they ha have fell in love with, uh, they became young, and they had a Twilight Zone adventure. Uh, this is the only clip I could find. I have trouble getting stuff from other sources, so bear with me here. Uh, coming up number nine is Driving Miss Wolfie. Uh, Heifer's mother, uh, I forgot the mother's name, uh, has never driven before, and they bought, and of course the father bought a brand new car, and um, uh, and of course she's never driven. But you know, everybody in the family could drive except for uh, uh, Heifer's mom, and of course uh, Rocco gets hijacked to. Uh, uh, learn how to drive by Rocco, and of course they uh, they uh, steal uh, the new car to learn how to drive. So here we go, uh, driving Miss Wolfie. The oldest times, you see, like this one, for instance. Low children play. And of course. Uh, they are trying to have literal meanings of the word slow children playing because obviously you're supposed to drive slow when, uh, when children are playing. Um, <clears throat> and of course, uh, this was, um, one of the many cartoons, you know, this is the early Nickelodeon, so, you know, where adults, and I guess, you know, adults still watch stuff for their children, but I guess this is one where they had a lot of adult jokes mixed in. And of course, as kids, we didn't get it because we still thought it was, it was still a funny joke where kids still laughed. Uh, but adults even laugh because they got the inside adult jokes. Uh, coming at number eight is a boob tube, where uh, Rocco needed a brand new television. And he just wanted a cheap, uh, basic set, and uh, he ends up getting. Uh, he wanted. It's called Mr. Sensible, and he ends up uh, getting. Um, <laughs> uh, you know the top of line. Uh, you know. You know, uh, you know, maybe five thousand dollar television set, and of course it's the '90s, and um, 
And then they had paper, you know, the pay-per-view was big back then. And of course, the 90 they have surround sound, and stereo system. And, uh, people still had record players, so people hooked up in their records, and and uh, you know had everything, you know had everything, you know top line, this and that. Uh, so uh, coming at uh, number eight, uh, boob tube. And of course, uh, uh, that was supposed to be the surround sound. Of course, that of course, uh, Heifer loses his brain. He had to go inside the television to get his brain and stuff. And uh, that was called that was a boob tube uh, for you. Next one is Magic Meatball. This one, um, uh, I guess, Conglomo, which is where Ed Big, you know, Rocco's neighbor Ed Big Head uh, works at. Uh, he was picked as a stooge. I guess they're trying to fast track uh, staff members. I guess because Glom was one of the con you know conglomerates, and they're trying to fast track employees. So some people get you know a certain you know fired really quickly if they don't do the work fast enough or on time enough. And um, <clears throat> and of course uh, Ed Bighead was you know he's a paper pusher of some kind, and um, so he. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, a staff member throws him a magic meatball, and he made all his decisions, and his decisions were stellar, based on you know yes or no answers with the magic meatball, and uh, you know, and of course, um, you know, you have uh, your child humor, be of your adult jokes mixed in. Uh, uh, so the next one here is magic meatball, and of course, you know, he was using his imagination. There was getting away with him uh, at Big Head. Of course, they call him Dead Big Head, as you saw. Yeah, you know, he's trying to, you know, he can't make his own decisions on his own. Anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, coming at number six is this, uh, number six is the uh, is the seven Z's. Uh, Mr. Big Head was traumatized as a little kid going to a pirate uh, uh, play, you know, some play or something that traumatized him as a little kid. And as an adult, he's having these traumatizing nightmares, and it kind of be starting to sleepwalk. And of course, it got into Rocco, and of course, Rocco's friends Heifer and Philbert, uh, you know, Philbert the Turtle. Uh, they started, um, <laughs> you know, they started engaging in, in his shenanigan with the with the sleepwalking and the nightmares he was having. Here we go with the seven Z's, number six. So it turns out uh, he wakes up with the uh, treasure in the first place and he kidnaps Spunky and they sink the house. And, uh, you know, Ed Biggie never really liked uh, Rocco anyways. He was, you know, probably late 50s, early 60s. He was an older uh, uh, gentleman. Anyway, uh, next one is Road Rage. Or Road Race. Road Rage. And uh, Rocco wanted to see... So this is during the 90s. I guess we were talking about, you know, gaining environmentalism. And uh, Rocco wanted to, uh, <clears throat> he, he was trying to um, see a national landmark before it disappeared, of course. Uh, but anyway, uh, and they go, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, go tour the United States. Remember, uh, Old Town is supposed to, be, it's supposed to be the San Fernando Valley, so it's supposed to be the valley. Anyway, um... So here we go with, uh, with the road mask. And remember, there's a lot of adult humor. So this is, again, this is not exactly for children, but and this is something I got. I found out a deleted scene, uh, but this is kind of the humor. But it was posted on television. This is kind of the humor they had uh, in the '90s. Sorry, 
we put up won't have room for another 20 minutes. You wait? Oh, we have clear to the budget. You can have room now. How long you want? Get to the run. All night? Okay. You run? And of course the uh, uh, the attraction gets taken down, but that, you know, you just had to get that, you know, dirty, you know, obviously kids wouldn't get it, of course they would laugh at something else, but obviously you get the adult, you know, obviously motels are, no, you know, especially cheap ones are known for the hookers and stuff, you know, and, you know, they, they only have, you know, cheap hourly weight rates and whatever, those cheap roadside motels across America, but it was a good episode overall, just one that, you know, so, um, <clears throat> The next one, again, this is, you know, it's amazing how this was actually for kids. And the next one is called Canned. Now, Canned, uh, Rocco gets fired from Conglomo's comic, comics to, uh, comic book store. And um, he has to find a job, another type of job, and, you know, before he gets his comic book job at kind of a lot of comics. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, I think, one of season one's episodes where he's looking for a job and... And of course, this is also on my top ten list. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Rocco. Mrs. Bighead? Well, Spunky. You gotta try not to laugh. That's a sex line. You know, they're fucking. You have to fuck on the phone type sex line. And, and and he's reading off a script and he didn't realize it's a, it's a sex line. You know, because that was popular in those, I think you still have those today, but they were really popular back in the, you know, in, you know, in the, in the, in the, you know, probably from the 60s to the 90s to have the sex line, because now it's all internet now. And, and it's like, oh yeah, Mrs. Big Head, you know, you know. <laughs> oh baby, oh baby. Rocco, click. <laughs> hey, you try not to laugh. Coming at number two is I Have No Son. Now again, O Town is supposed to be the valley and um and they have Hollywood instead of Hollywood and um uh Mr. Big Head and uh Mrs. Big Head um they're having an anniversary and they want their son and their son, you know, Ed Big Head wanted his son to fall in his footsteps and it didn't happen that way. And so, uh, here we have, as number two, I Have No Son. Say cheese. Apologize for skipping number three, um, jet stream. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was number two. I have no son, and he's obviously a cartoonist. And um, I guess they're trying to stereotype Jews a little bit. I'm not too sure. But anyway, uh, they, they reconcile, and Rocco helps out. Anywho, so number three, which I skipped over, is called Jet Stream. This one um, is obviously definitely '90s. Definitely '90s humor. And it talks. It talks about flying, and of course, Rocco uh, won a trip to a convention. I think it was a comic book convention in Las Vegas, and um, it talks about the joys of, and horrors of flying in the '90s. You know, uh, they just, you know they just deregulated the airlines in the in the late '80s. So, this is, and this is taking place in the early '90s. They're talking about the joys and horrors of flying, and you know, this is pre-9/11. And uh, this was also number three, but I jumped over. But yeah, this is also on my top ten list.
as you, you can see, this is pre-9-11, but they still have metal detectors. And it's funny because you saw the, you know, the Tin Man, and you saw that guy with the chainsaw going through the metal detector, and, and here, they're, you know, all, he's practically naked, and, 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 he, and it's his, you know, it's his mouth that's beeping. You know, he has metal, you know, he has a, a, a filler. Eh. And I wish I could do more, but I'm trying to save off on, uh, you know, on, on, um, you know, on, on copyright business. Anyway, so that was uh, number three. Anyway, so I skipped, went to no, number one, Wacky Deli. This is kind of the sequel to I Have No Son, uh, but this time, um, uh, he wants to get out of the uh, business of Hollywood, and he's trying to destroy, and and it's kind of, they're kind of like a Warner Brothers Disney type corporation, and he wants to destroy, and of course, uh, this is kind of the best one, the best humor. And here we go with number one, Wacky Deli. We love it. <laughs> they didn't destroy. They did not destroy. The, the, obviously, the producers are idiots, and they, 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 he still had to make cartoons. So he, right? Of course, he eventually did make an actual cartoon, and they canceled him. And uh, uh, Big Head Son got what he really wanted at the end. But that's you know number one episode. Obviously, with the adult humor mixed in. Of course, kids are laughing at the other stuff in there, and um, obviously they had the writers and the animators and people from the Ren and Stimpy, which is uh, you know a Nicktoon prior to Rocco. Obviously, they had the creators of Ren and Stimpy uh, in there, and that's why I think I liked about because it, it was kind of like, you know Ren and Stimpy was kind of like a proto cartoon, and this was kind of like what Ren and Stimpy should have been, and this is kind of like a better show. Because it has plots, and also it does teach some, you know, they have some things on recycling and other things like that. Anyway, um, so, um, uh, yeah, so that, that's my top ten of Rocco's Modern Life. And uh, this is giant 2 b a.k.a. Uh, David, uh, signing off, and I hope to see you out there. Next one will probably be a restaurant review. Have a nice day or a good night wherever you are. Thanks. Good night.